where nuclear war has begun. Vampires fought back in super real 3D. I've been making videos for about 20 years. And for 15 of those years, I've been doing color grading because I didn't even know what color grading was when I first started. And there was less information available back then um, <laughs> about learning about this stuff. So I'm self-taught. I have done all the color grading on all the videos for all my clients and personal efforts. Uh, all that color grading has happened inside of Adobe Premiere but I have used a plugin. But it's in combination with what they have inside of Adobe because it was a big deal when Adobe did uh, implement Lumetri inside of Premiere. That has been huge, very, very cool. It's just gotten better and better along the way, everything about Adobe's ability to take advantage of also using this plugin suite that I use. And that plugin suite is the Red Giant suite. I have the whole Red Giant membership, so I have access to everything. And the things that I use are Magic Bullets, um, Colorista, which is also kind of inside of Magic Bullets, the Denoiser, I use the VFX suite, I use Universe, there's some specific things inside of there. It's a really great suite to have. I have no affiliation with Red Giant uh, whatsoever. I have never communicated with them past figuring out something technical. So I, I'm just saying this because there's just been a dramatic push that if you're gonna color grade things properly, like you need to at least be getting into DaVinci Resolve. Um, maybe you don't like my color grades. I don't know. I, I personally am very happy with how they come out and clients hunt me down for the look that I produce and the look that I produce depends heavily on the color grade that I produce. So I like being able to stay inside of one program. I like the efficiency of that. I have tried Resolve a handful of times and I am not saying that I wouldn't get better at it. I'm not, I'm not good in Resolve at all, but I really got frustrated with pulling the project out as an XML with how I like to do my project because they get the edits get kind of complicated with the way that I like to stack layers and overlays, blend certain things together and then nest certain sequences and working with all kinds of different footage from raw off of a Sony to raw off of a RED to a compressed Canon codec to now raw on Canon. And when you start having all these different and then converting some of it to ProRes along the way to render out certain things, having all that, I just don't, I, I'm sure it's gotten better and better, but it seems like a pain to get that to come all the way over to Resolve. Now, could I switch over to Resolve completely like a lot of people have been doing? That's a different conversation that I'll have at another point. Bottom line is for me that I'm just gonna summarize it as, I've been doing Premiere for 20 years, guys. The switch to that, I, you know how big of a dent in the workflow that I would have? I cannot afford to switch. My schedule is oftentimes working <laughs> seven days a week. This year has been a lot of seven day work weeks. Making these videos is very, very challenging. I don't have the time for the learning curve of something that I've gotten so efficient at that I have some issues in, but know all the workarounds too. So that is a different conversation. Let's stick to the idea of, can you make a high quality color graded video inside of Adobe Premiere without leaving it? I do recommend highly to have the Red Giant Suite, as it is a part of what establishes the look that I have, but you can pull off amazing stuff with just Lumetri and finding even free LUTs and stuff like that and using those as starting points and then developing it out. One of the big things that has been a game changer that I really did feel like I was missing out on when I didn't use Resolve is the ability to create masks inside of Premiere and motion track those masks. That was not there for a very long time but now it has been there for quite a while. And ever since they implemented that, it's just been amazing. Because no, it's not great. Like it's not as smooth of an experience creating a mask inside of Premiere as it is in After Effects. After Effects is a lot snappier. It's a lot quicker and you feel like you have a lot more fine tune adjustment ability when you go to pull those anchor handles out, things like that. But with Premiere being able to do it inside, there's so much you can get away with with large feathering of the edges to be able to cover up those masks very well. You don't have to go super, super detailed. It's not like full rotoscoping. It's just like getting these general sections, feathering it pretty 
you know, widely, and then motion tracking that aspect of it to bring some certain exposure level adjustment to a specific object or sharpness or, you know, a certain color hint or hue. So that way the, con the color contrast helps that item stand out or reverse invert it. So the background kind of has a different thing. There's a lot of options there. It really opened up a lot of doors. Once that, that's, once that had been put in place with masking inside of Premiere, it was just like, all right, I really, now I really don't feel like I'm missing much with Resolve. Now I am sure there are plenty of people that if you're, if you're watching this, I'm surprised that you're still watching this if you're a absolute Resolve lover and you're here to defend Resolve. I am not bashing Resolve. Resolve, I'm sure ultimately does, it, I know that it gives you more control. I know that it uses the GPU in a different way and can be more powerful. I know these things, but if you're a Premiere editor and you're here watching this video because you're a premiere editor and you're wondering because maybe it's just that you that's what you have access to right now i know that there's free versions of resolve and all that but maybe just for whatever reason you know you're in the adobe section of things because adobe is still used in, as far as i understand it and with nle um, editors like an actual editor adobe premiere is still more widely used than resolve is a lot of people are getting into resolve but this isn't as universal of a software to be handing off NLE edits on um, back and forth to different production houses as Adobe is. It's pretty, it's got a pretty good foothold on that. There are Final Cut users. Again, another conversation. You're here because of Premiere. You're here because you're wondering, can I get awesome color grades just staying inside of Premiere? And is there something I can do to boost that? Because I did mention in the title that there's a plugin that I use and the Red Giant Suite is, is it. I really do recommend it. There's a lot of little polishing techniques and things that I can get out of it that I just cannot achieve with Lumetri. Uh, some bells and whistles. If you get the full membership for it and you have access to the VFX suite, the optical glow is a really nice little boost. Subtle little bumps of different little tools that can help edge glow and, and things like that. That just like, wow, I got it. why does it look so good? You know, it kind of just gets that pop and shine. The Magic Bullet looks itself does open a separate panel inside. You can you can look at all these tutorials what i'm really here to show you is consistently different types of looks that i've created for different projects over the years using a wide variety of cameras from different manufacturers different brands some of this is sony footage some of it's canon some of it's red some of it might even be gopro some of it i don't know what all i'm gonna end up showing on this but like it's a lot of different codecs it's a lot of different log profiles and you can get all these results directly inside of Premiere. So if that's where you feel comfortable and you're just wanting to keep getting better at it, you are not fighting a lost cause here. You can absolutely get very good at editing your color inside of Premiere. If you don't dig my color grades, no worries. I know that I can make money doing the color grades that I do. And I know that personally, I'm very happy with the color grades I get. And I know my clients are very happy with the color grades. And I think the color grades are, I know that the color grades are a large part of why I get hired for my work. Cause that's where the look really starts to happen for me, where I can kind of establish like, man, like why the clients are wondering like how I got it to look that good. It's not just the camera, it's having the flexibility in the codec and then getting the color grade there. That being said, some of the stuff that you've seen that I've shown was on eight bit color. Some of it was compressed codecs. So it's not like you have to have 16-bit RAW from a RED or 12-bit RAW from a Canon. It's, you can, some of it's 10-bit ProRes, some of it's just good old H.264, 8-bit, you know, and you can still just learn how to work it, get it happening inside of Premiere. In addition to the Red Giant Suite, I mentioned it before, using LUTs inside of Lumetri is great. Just, there's so many free LUTs. One of the best free packs of LUTs I've ever gotten and i still use a lot of them in particular the master there's master one and master two but it's a it, I'm, they probably still give it out for free on artlist.com you can go there you can get like free a whole pack of free effects and stuff and one of them is an entire LUT library that's fantastic i'll if i'll try to find it put a link to it in the bottom description here so you guys can download that it's excellent try and master just know when you put a LUT on uh, it's at a hundred percent. It's not going to look great first. What I usually do is I'll get like a, a baseline of contrast and a baseline of saturation. That's not full, the full amount of contrast that I want. And that's not the full amount of saturation that I want, but it's bumped up maybe 50 
to 70% rather than having it at just zero and then putting the LUT on. And that way when I put the LUT on, I can get some idea of how much it's manipulating the color spectrum that wants to be there. And from there, I can back my contrast back down or, and I can also lower the intensity level of the LUT being used. And I also highly, highly recommend the way that I'm achieving these looks, it is not just one instance of Lumetri or one instance of, with like one instance of looks. I'm stacking all kinds of stuff because you just keep, it matters what order they're in and you can just keep stacking different instances of things and you'll find and figure out reasons for doing that. So just kind of keep building the look as you go. And from there you can copy all those and paste them on to the new piece of footage. We're getting a little bit detailed here. I do have a li I, I want to make more videos on color grading should you guys say that you like my color grades and that you would like to know more about my color grading process inside of Premiere. But just know, keep exploring. It's worth it. I think that you can produce great results inside of it. So I hope that helps. And you guys are awesome for actually watching this video. <laughs> I appreciate it because I'd like the excuse to make more videos about this because I love talking about this kind of stuff. And I hope that you guys have a great day, night, weekend, whatever, whenever you're finding this, maybe this is it, two years from now, this is evergreen content because Premiere is not going to go backwards. And I know that they can do this good. It's only going to get better. So um, even aside from a glitch hiccup, they fix like a bug or something, which they fix most things, most of them. There's a couple of hiccups, but I think every software has that once you delve into it. Every camera has a cork and every, you know, everyone wants to pretend like the grass is greener on the other side and it's pristine over there, but every thing that I have tried, tool <laughs> and every piece of software, everything's got a glitch sitting somewhere in it, some compromise. And the people that actually get those products and delve deep into them are the ones that find that. And uh, it's good to be vocal about it. Adobe does have glitches, it does have little bugs to work around, but um, not all associated with color, they're associated with the random things. But anyway, take care, peace.